Florida sunshine Hello there. So nice of you to join me. You know, I love it here in Florida. It's my all-time favorite state. There's sunshine, palm trees, and of course, delicious Florida oranges. Just like these ones you see growing around me right here. Oh, hello there, little orange bird. Look, orange bird, some new friends have joined us. And soon, we're going to help them learn all about you. Oh, I love you too, orange bird. And soon, all of you will too. Hey, extraordinary people. I'm Daniel, and today we're going to talk about the orange bird. So, orange bird is my favorite Disney Parks character. He's an adorable little bird with an orange fur head and leaves for wings, and he hangs out at the Sunshine Tree Terrace in Adventureland at the Magic Kingdom. In recent years, he's become an extremely popular character, being featured on tons of merchandise, and currently serving as the mascot of Epcot's Flower and Garden Festival, as well as one of the mascots of the Walt Disney World Resort in general, and especially the ongoing 50th anniversary celebration. However, even if you're currently wearing an orange bird spirit jersey and bucket hat, You may not know who the orange bird is, where he comes from, or how fascinating and disturbing his story really is. So without further ado, let's get into the complete history and story of the orange bird. Little orange bird, little orange bird, in the sunshine tree, in the sunshine tree, won't you think of something sunny just for me? Think of funny thoughts, think of funny thoughts, or sunny words, or sunny words. That will make me happy, little orange bird. Part 1. The Origin of the Orange Bird Our story begins all the way back in 1928, when an unsuspecting world was about to be changed forever. On November 18, 1928, Walt Disney released the first theatrically released Mickey Mouse cartoon, Steamboat Willie, and it was an immediate smash hit. Audiences loved the expressive animation, mischievous characters, hilarious visual gags, and especially the innovative, and up to that point literally unheard of, use of sound and music. A star was born, and this was only the beginning. As Mickey Mouse cartoons dominated local theaters, audiences couldn't get enough of him. They loved Mickey. And that's what gave Disney a brilliant idea. What if audiences didn't have to go to theaters to get their Mickey Mouse fix? What if they could have Mickey in their homes? Now, of course, I'm not talking about television or home video, both of which were decades away. I'm talking about merchandising. Now, this wasn't the first time a fictional character had been merchandised, but it was the first time that the full potential of merchandising would be explored. With the help of a businessman named Kay Kamen, Walt Disney would make sure that Mickey Mouse was everywhere. On watches, clothes, food, candy, plush toys, you name it, Mickey was on it. Disney merchandising quickly became a multi-million dollar industry, making even more money than the cartoons themselves, and every company wanted in. Every company wanted to work with Disney. Now let's fast forward to 1967, when one such company, the Florida Citrus Commission, was attempting to do just that. The Florida Citrus Commission is a group that represents Florida's citrus growers, processors, and packers. And when they heard about the construction of the new Walt Disney World Resort's Magic Kingdom, they reached out to Disney with an offer to sponsor one of the attractions at the park. In return, they requested permission to use a Disney character in their advertising. Disney was eager to work with them, but there were two problems. First, there was no obvious attraction that would be a good fit for Florida Oranges. And second, and more importantly, Disney was not about to give away one of its characters to become associated with another company and potentially tarnish that character's reputation in the eyes of the public. <clears throat> However, Disney was also not about to let a lucrative sponsorship deal go to waste, so they quickly figured out a solution. They decided that the FCC could sponsor the Tropical Serenade attraction in Adventureland, now known as Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room, and operate a snack and juice bar called the Sunshine Tree Terrace outside. And as for a character for the FCC, Disney simply decided to create a new one. That character was Orange Bird. Part 2. The Creation of the Orange Bird Orange Bird was designed by Don McLaughlin and Bob Moore, and is an orange canary with an orange fur head and green leaves for wings. He has a sunny personality, eyes that will melt your soul, and a smile that will capture your heart. However, his most unique attribute is that he doesn't speak or make any sound at all. Instead, 
He thinks orange thoughts that materialize as smoke clouds over his head, containing pictures of whatever he's thinking about. Orange Bird debuted at the opening of the Magic Kingdom in 1971 as a walk-around character welcoming guests to Adventureland and escorting them to the Sunshine Tree Terrace where they could enjoy a delicious citrus swirl or glass of orange juice. However, as per Disney's agreement with the SEC, Orange Bird also appeared outside of the Magic Kingdom. Not only would Orange Bird greet travelers at the Florida Welcome Center, he would also enter homes all across America through the magic of television, appearing in commercials for Florida Orange Juice alongside popular singer Anita Bryant, who had been hired by the FCC as the spokesperson for their campaign. Orange Juice from Florida! It isn't just for breakfast anymore! Time to get up, kids! You too, Orange Bird! My twins love 100% orange juice from Florida any time of day. It comes many ways and many brands. So wholesome. Mothers can serve all they want for just pennies a glass. Mom, please. Sure. A day without orange juice is like a day without sunshine. Orange juice, serve it generously from the Florida sunshine tree. <laughs> I love how Nia Bryant's kid is like, I'm hungry, and she's just like, here's your orange juice. Mother of the Year award right there. <clears throat> the orange bird was more than just a cute character in some commercials, though. Disney wanted guests to connect with the character on an emotional level. And that brings us to part three, the orange bird's story. Disney knew that if the public was truly to fall in love with the Orange Bird, they would need to get to know him. So to that end, they created a special record album and accompanying picture book to tell the character's story, with the famed Disney songwriting duo the Sherman Brothers writing songs for the album, which were performed by Anita Bryant and produced by Disney legend Salvador Camarada. Now, I was actually able to get my hands on two of the records that they produced for The Orange Bird. This one contains four of the six songs from the full-length album, and this one is a single of The Orange Bird song with the song Orange Tree as the B-side. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find the full-length record album itself, but I was able to find a digital version online. Anita Bryant narrates the story and begins by telling us that this story is not once upon a time, but once upon a now, emphasizing its relevance in the modern day. <clears throat> Many times, stories start out by saying, once upon a time. Our story is different. It's once upon a now. The story begins with the Orange Bird song. thinks beautiful orange pictures and beautiful orange words though his little beak can't even be a squeak all the thoughts he ever spoke appear in orange smoke that's what makes the orange bird unique little orange bird, little orange bird. in the sunshine tree in the sunshine 
sunshine tree. Won't you think of something sunny just for me? Think a funny thought. Think a funny thought. Or a sunny word. Or a sunny word. That will make me happy, little orange bird. The orange bird has no friends and is very lonesome. This is because he can't talk, but instead makes orange pictures over his head. But he has no friends and he's very lonesome. Perhaps one reason is that he doesn't make any sounds. Orange thoughts appear in the air above his head, nice and orange and billowy. Yeah, billowy's good. <laughs> one day, since he was so lonely, the orange bird decided to fly out into the country. As he came closer to the park, he heard some singing. Dogs bark, cows moo. He sees some birds singing the song Sing All Day and tries to join them. The birds all laugh and make fun of him when he tries to sing though, and so he decides to leave his home and find some friends. I want so much to be their friends. Perhaps if I think very hard, I'll be able to sing with them. All the orange bird got for his effort was a large orange note suspended in the air over his head. The other birds thought he was ridiculous. They pointed to the note in the air and held their sides with laughter. <laughs> Why can't I make some friends? Maybe if I go away on a long, long trip to a sunny place in the south, I'll find some friends there. He sets off on a trip and we hear the song, I'll Fly the Skyway. Over the beautiful highway, on my own a rolling stone I'll be. Far nicer places, friendlier, happier faces are waiting down the skyway just for me. And where the highway ends, I'll make some brand new friends. And oh, the fun we'll have when I flutter down. No one will think it absurd that I'm an orange bird, unable to speak a word or utter a sound. Oh, I'll fly the skyway, follow the beautiful highway, till I find some friendly company. My heart is full of elation at the wonderful vacation, waiting down the skyway for me. Eventually he reaches a city and falls asleep in an alley. After his first day exploring the city, he was so tired that he fell asleep in a box in an alley. He's awoken by a cat who wants to eat him, but the cat is annoyed that the orange bird won't make any noise. And we hear the song a cat don't like. It's a cat! Meow! Oh, hello, breakfast! I hope you taste better than you sound, bird. Are you scared, speechless? A cat don't like a bird that's a dummy. Makes it more yummy if he talks. A cat enjoys a bird that'll murmur if he's a squirmer and he squawks. Skidoo, buddy, doop, doop, dooby doo doo. The orange bird makes a picture of a mouse to distract the cat and escapes. He had a stroke of genius. He thought a mouse. Alley Cat sprang on the orange ah. mouse. And all he got for his troubles was a mouthful of orange dust. While the orange bird flew safely away. After mistaking a traffic light for another orange bird, orange bird leaves the city and finds a family of four having a picnic. We hear the song, The Perfect Picnic. I think I see a birdhouse hanging from a wire. Alas for the little orange bird. What he had seen was a traffic light. It surely was discouraging not to be able to find a friend. He was so lonely, he almost turned blue, but not quite. For suddenly, he realized he was back in familiar surroundings. Down below was the little picnic park. A man and a woman and two children were having a picnic. As he flew down to them, he heard singing. 
The pickles and relish and mustard are spread on the blanket right next to the cheese and the bread. So gather round and settle down, we'll have a perfect picnic. So gather round and settle down, we'll have a perfect picnic. Orange Bird flies down to meet them, and although the son, daughter, and mother all seem to like him, the father is immediately suspicious of a bird that makes no sound. Hey, look at that cute orange bird. He sure looks tame. Yeah, he's cute. Don't mess with strange birds. He hasn't let out a cheap. Probably has laryngitis or something. Now, you kids keep away from that orangey bird. Three of the four like me. That's, That's a, majority. a majority. I've, I've got, got to, to let, let them know I like, like them, them too. The orange bird thinks an orange thought that says I love you, but the father remains stubbornly suspicious. I love you. He's saying he loves us. He made orange words that said, I love you. I don't see any words, just some orange fog. It's some kind of a trick, some newfangled trick toy bird. Can't be for real. Daddy, can we keep him? Yeah, I want to keep him. Are you all out of your mind? Here we are off on a vacation. We left all of our pets behind, remember? So we wouldn't be bothered, remember? Now you want to take this crazy mixed up orange thingamajig with us. He'll fog up the windshield with that orange stuff of his. They drive away, and the orange bird flies after them. He sees that they're about to drive over a damaged bridge, though, and thinks up an enormous orange stop sign in front of them. The orange bird couldn't stand to see them go. Well, after all, some of them had liked him very much, had wanted him for a pet. So he spiraled up into the sky and flew along the highway they were taking. Faster and faster he flew, until he was way ahead of the little car. And then he saw it. Around the sharp bend, there was a bridge which had been washed out by the winter storms. Unless he could warm the family, their little car would plunge down a steep cliff into a roaring river. I'll think a huge orange stop sign right now. <sighs> The family realizes that the orange bird saved their lives, and the father admits they should have given the orange bird a chance. He apologizes and says that the orange bird can live with them. Did you see that? That orange bird made that big orange stop sign to warn us. He saved our lives. You're really a friend, orange bird. I knew it all the time, but Daddy didn't. When you meet somebody new, you should stop, look, and listen. And most times, he'll turn out to be a friend. Yeah. A friend. You're right, kids. I should have stopped, looked, and listened. I've jumped to too many conclusions in my life, and many times I've been wrong. I was wrong about you, Orange Bird. You're really okay. You can come along with us on our vacation and be our friend forever. <gasps> oh, that'll make me so happy. Me too. Happy. It's made the Orange Bird happy too. Look at him making all kinds of hearts and kisses in the air. It was true. The orange bird was happier than he had ever been in his life. The story ends with the song Orange Tree. Orange tree, with your fragrant branches blossoming. Orange tree. A miracle you are. Oh, a tree cannot trace your graceful mystery. Orange tree. There were also two educational cartoons produced about the orange bird, Food and Fun, A Nutrition Adventure, and The Orange Bird and the Nutrition Bandwagon. While I don't think The Nutrition Bandwagon is available anywhere online, Food and Fun, A Nutrition Adventure is available here on YouTube. The cartoon more or less follows the basic story of the record, but includes educational segments about nutrition and the food groups. The story begins with the orange bird living in a place called Birdville, and being very lonely since the other birds have all flown south for the winter. Instead of twittering or singing like other birds, 
wants to say something, bright orange pictures appear over his head. Right now, he's pretty sad because there's hardly a soul around, and it can get pretty lonesome without any friends. He sees some birds singing and attempts to join them, but they laugh at him for being unable to. What was that? That was a sour note. I didn't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear it either, but I saw it. Hey, man, you're messing up our song with that orange fog. What kind of bird are you, anyway? Did you ever see a bird that couldn't sing? I never did till now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee, fellas, we made the orange bird blue. <laughs> One of the birds, a toucan, tells the orange bird that he should fly south, but that he can't travel with the other birds because he's not in shape and would be too slow. Hey, what are you doing around here anyway? Winter's coming. It's time to head south. Oh, no. You're not going with us. Nothing personal, pal. It's just that flying south is a long, hard trip. You couldn't keep up. The toucan tells orange bird to see Doc Owl. You'd better get in shape. Go see Doc Owl. Orange Bird visits Doc Owl, who tells him how to exercise need healthy. <clears throat> uh, good nutrition is an essential part of good health. And to eat properly, you must select a balanced diet from a variety of foods. Variety is what you'll find in the food I have in mind. A balanced diet will supply nutritious meals to help you find. <laughs> Oh, thank you very much. Now, I recommend that you get right to work. It's going to take time to build yourself up. You've got to get busy if you hope to be on your way south before winter comes. The orange bird goes home to get started. After a good night's sleep, the next thing was to have a good, nutritious breakfast to start the day. He decided to have some whole grain cereal with milk on it. For protein, he chose a fresh egg. The orange bird had an egg? What? what? The orange bird gets in shape and flies south, where he narrowly escapes a crocodile before running into the toucan again. Gator won't bother anybody for a while. Hey there, pal. You put on quite a show. I've been watching you. How'd you get here, anyway? You flew all the way? Built yourself up, huh? Got lots of rest? Ate the right kind of food? Got plenty of exercise? The toucan still declines to be Orange Bird's friend, but directs him to the beach where he can find friends. If you really want to find friends, you just head that way over to the beach. Ah, see you later. He sees a family on the beach and tries to befriend them, but the dad says that they have too many pets at home. Oh, thank you. They're just right. Hey, look. He wants to play with us. Oh, isn't he cute? <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, that's a great castle. It even has its own flower garden. And it has its own special night. Oh. A little orange bird. He came to play with us. He wants to be our friend. Can he stay with us? Oh, come on now, kids. We've already got too many pets at home. But, Dad, he must be something special. Oh, can he come can home, he come with, home us, with us? Can he come home with us, please, Dad? Oh, uh, I, I'm sorry, kids, but we don't need another pet. On your way now. Shoo. The dad walks off to go fishing, and the orange bird sees that the pier he's about to walk onto is about to collapse. Well, I'm going down to the pier to see if I can catch a couple of fish. Be careful, dear. No, I'll be careful. Orange bird thinks up a giant stop sign and sits on the pier, making it collapse.
The dad thanks the orange bird and brings him back with him to have a picnic with his family. What happened, dear? I'll tell you later. But right now, let's eat. My little friend and I are starved. Hooray! They sing a song about the food groups, and the cartoon ends with the orange bird going to live with them. Our basket's filled with fruits and meat and other things we like to eat. A real nutritious luncheon treat to have a family picnic. And this is how our story ends. Orange Bird has found his friends. The last piece of media that tells the story of the Orange Bird is a little golden book from this year, 2022, tailed simply The Orange Bird. And it differs significantly from the record album and the cartoon, although the character himself remains the same. While the previous two stories focused on the orange bird going on a journey searching for friends and acceptance, this version focuses on the orange bird's life on a citrus farm with other birds. The orange bird lives on a citrus farm with a farmer, other birds, and a cat named Clementine. He teaches the other birds how to draw, picks out the best oranges for the farmer, and plays with the other birds. One day, Clementine the cat gets out of the house and tries to eat one of the birds. It doesn't say this in the book, but in case you were wondering, the bird is Sonia the duck from the Peter and the Wolf segment of Make Mine Music. Orange Bird tries to save the bird by distracting Clementine with pictures of a stop sign, a bulldog, and the farmer. It doesn't really work, but apparently the farmer sees the pictures and comes over to investigate, stopping Clementine before she can eat the bird. The story ends with all the birds celebrating how the Orange Bird saved their friend. While all three versions of the Orange Bird story, the record, the cartoon, and the little golden book, all are cute simple stories and all have their strengths, the best one is undoubtedly the record. While the Little Golden Book has gorgeous illustrations and the cartoon brings the orange bird to life through animation, neither of these has the storytelling power or quality that the record has. First, the Little Golden Book completely ignores the orange bird's central theme and message, telling a story that's cute but ultimately pointless. And while the cartoon gets the basics of the story right, the educational segments feel out of place, the colors are muted and subdued, and worst of all, the drama and tension is significantly watered down, softening the story's message. The record, on the other hand, contains the Sherman Brothers songs, Ania Bryant's charming narration, colorful full-page illustrations, and the strongest of the three stories. I'll quickly compare a few scenes from the cartoon and the record to show you what I mean. So in both versions, the orange bird hears some birds singing and tries to join them. While they make fun of him in both versions, it's much worse in the record, with the cartoon birds lightly making fun of him, but then one ultimately helping him. <laughs> hey, what was that? That was a sour note. I didn't hear it. <laughs> I didn't hear it either, but I saw it. Hey, man, you're messing up our song with that orange fog. Hey, what are you doing around here anyway? Winter's coming. It's time to head south. The birds in the record, on the other hand, are just total jerks to the orange bird, highlighting that this is a story about bullying and being rejected for being different. The other birds thought he was ridiculous. They pointed to the note in the air and held their sides with laughter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that funny-looking bird thinks he can sing. Our next scene is when the orange bird encounters some danger on his journey. In the cartoon, this comes in the form of a crocodile, while on the record, it's a cat. In the cartoon, the orange bird simply flies away until the toucan throws a coconut at the crocodile's head. Other than reintroducing the toucan and showing that the orange bird is in an unfamiliar location, the scene doesn't really do much for the story. Now contrast this with the cat scene in the record. In this scene, the orange bird is cornered and can't just fly away, nor is there anyone around to save him. He has to, quite literally, think his way out of danger. This scene also highlights how alone the orange bird is and how dangerous this world is for him. Finally, let's look at the scene where he meets a human family. This scene is more or less the same in both versions, but in the cartoon, the only reason that the dad doesn't want to take the orange bird home is because he says they already have too many pets, but he tries to be as nice as he can about it. In the record, though, he's just a straight-up jerk going off on a rant about how a bird that can't sing or make any noise is unnatural and can't be trusted. Don't mess with strange birds. He hasn't let out a cheep. Probably has laryngitis or something. I think he's kind of strange. He hasn't let out a cheep, much less sing. Now you kids keep away from that orangey bird. Now you want to take this crazy mixed up orange thingamajig with us. He'll fog up the windshield with that orange stuff of his. This makes it so after the orange bird saves his life, he has to apologize and admit that he was wrong. You're right, kids. I should have stopped, looked, and listened. I've jumped to too many conclusions in my life, and many times I've been wrong. I was wrong about you, orange bird. You're really okay. This brings home the story's message about intolerance and closed-mindedness, and the fact that everyone deserves to be accepted the way they are. And boy, what a perfect transition that is to part four. 
the orange bird disappears. Now this is where the orange bird story takes a dark turn. You see, orange bird completely disappeared for around two decades and all had to do with Anita Bryant. Anita Bryant, as you may recall, was hired by the FCC as the spokesperson for their ad campaign, appearing in commercials with the Orange Bird and singing and narrating the Orange Bird's record album. At the time, it made perfect sense. Anita Bryant was a popular singer with hits like Paper Roses and In My Little Corner of the World. But in 1977, she decided to make a name for herself in something else, anti-gay activism. Her name was Anita Bryant. She went on to become a top entertainer, then virtually vanished from sight after a bitter controversy that pitted her against the nation's gay community. You see, Dade County, Florida passed an ordinance prohibiting discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation, and in response, Bryant, a Christian fundamentalist, started a coalition called Save Our Children to get the ordinance repealed. She said, What these people really want, hidden behind obscure legal phrases, is the legal right to propose to our children that theirs is an acceptable alternative way of life. I will lead such a crusade to stop it as this country has not seen before. And she did exactly that. Her campaign spread across the nation and is credited with helping create the reactionary social conservatism that we see today from the political right. She gave us every ac access to world media. We had over 50,000 news clippings. Uh, this, is the, this is the turning point where gay became a household word and we opened up the entire debate on human sexuality. She was joined by other fundamentalists such as Jerry Falwell Sr., and their campaign portrayed homosexuality as unnatural and an affront to God. They claimed that gay people were attempting to recruit and molest children, hence the name of the campaign, Save Our Children. And Bryant even went so far as to call gay people human garbage. If homosexuals are allowed their civil rights, then so would prostitutes or thieves or anyone else. The campaign was eventually successful, with 69% of Floridians voting to repeal the ordinance. However, her actions sparked a massive backlash from the LGBTQ community who organized a boycott of Florida orange juice. Gay bars stopped serving it, and the boycott spread across the nation, with television hosts like Johnny Carson making fun of Bryant, and an activist even throwing a pie in her face on live TV. Uh, every oh, oh, oh. Security agents, security agents. No, no, let, let him stay. No. Let him stay. Well, at least stay. it's a fruit pie. Thus always to bigots. Do you know who's here? That's always the you know who saw you do we that? You to the Midwest. We hope you come back. Do you know who saw you do we that? Love you as a person. This man is from Rolling Stone we magazine. You. We love you. Do you, you know as what kind of publicity you're going to get? Stand the garbage you spout. Wanting to end the boycott, the Florida Citrus Commission ended Anita Bryant's contract in 1980. And although they didn't immediately stop using the Orange Bird, the controversy still loomed large over the character. And with the profitability of the partnership in question anyway, the Florida Citrus Commission chose not to renew their partnership with Disney. And with that, the Orange Bird was gone. Part 5. The Orange Bird Returns as the years went by, it seemed that the Orange Bird was gone for good. But then in 2004, the Orange Bird made a comeback in the most unexpected place, Tokyo Disneyland. He was featured as part of a celebration of Japan's annual Orange Day and immediately became popular with Japanese park goers. Merchandise for the Orange Bird started appearing in US Disney stores, and eventually, in April of 2012, the Orange Bird made his triumphant return to Walt Disney World's Magic Kingdom in a newly restored Sunshine Tree Terrace. The character's popularity has only grown since, with this year seeing him featured as the mascot of Epcot's Flower and Garden Festival and as one of the mascots of the Walt Disney World Resort itself. Part 6. Think Orange. Now, as I said at the beginning of this video, Orange Bird is my favorite Disney Parks character, partly because he's orange, which is my favorite color, and just because he's adorable. But there's a deeper reason why I love him so much. Let's see. What could it be? He's orange, so he stands out. He thinks in pictures. He communicates in an atypical way. He has a hard time making friends. He's very sweet and kind, but people don't trust him. People judge him before they get to know him. People think there's something wrong with him, when really he just needs to be understood and accepted. <sighs> the orange bird is autistic. Okay, yes, I know he's not literally autistic, but come on. The parallels are all over the place and impossible to ignore, and I'm hardly the first person to point them out. In fact, the orange bird, with his struggle to be accepted for his differences, has been recognized in multiple online spaces as being representative of the autistic and queer communities, both of which I happen to be a member of. The orange bird's fictional story and real life story show how important it is to accept and love others the way that they are. And with 2022 having the most anti-LGBTQ legislation proposed in state legislatures in American history, including the quote-unquote don't say gay bill that was recently passed in Florida, I'd say we need the orange bird now more than ever. So next time you're feeling blue, 
Remember to think orange thoughts. And most importantly, remember that no matter who you are, where you come from, how you communicate, or who you love, you deserve to be accepted and loved exactly the way that you are. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments who your favorite Disney Parks character is and why it's the Orange Bird. And if you did enjoy this video, I'd really appreciate if you could leave me a like, subscribe to the channel, and remember that you're extraordinary. I love all of you so much. Bye. When you're just about green with envy Or gonna be feeling blue You can use a little orange thought or two When you start in blushing pink Or your temper turns you red That's when the orange bird can see you through